Rise and shine, value farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for the 100K subscribers on YouTube. Yes, this is the first video that we are making after making 100K subscribers. We are super excited. It is a beautiful day at the farm. The sun is out. Yeah, it's really amazing to be at the farm at this very moment. And of course, to also give you guys updates and also to share with you guys what is currently happening at the farm. As you can see me right here, it is a kind of different setting. I know the background is quite different, but I'm in the garden, guys. You can see from behind just right here, this is our garden. And I really wanted to share with you guys our farm tour to show you guys what is actually happening because it's a farm. It's a mixed farm. We have livestock and of course we also have to plant crops. We have to plant grass for the animals as well, especially for the goats, for the sheep and for the cows as well. So as a farmer out there, what do you really need to do if you're to begin your farm? You need to have your feeds ready. Because of the inflation right now, the prices are really up. So you don't want to be in that boat of buying feeds all the time and wasting a lot of money. Yet you can definitely grow your own crops. So where we are standing here, we have different types of crops that we've planted this season. In Uganda, we have two seasons. We have the dry and wet season. And of course, the, dr the wet season, that's when we normally do the planting. And we did plant this season. It's rainy season, though, of course, the sun is out today. But I know the rains are coming. We've prepared our gardens very well and we already started the planting because we expect the rains to be here anytime. So here particularly in this, this section right here, we have the sugar graze. And of course, if you're a goat farmer out there, you know what you'd really need the sugar graze for. So we have the sugar graze, we have the um, sun hem, we have the alfalfa, we also have the lab lab as well. We have different kinds of grasses that we really planted because we really want to boost the protein for the animals as well and also other nutrients for our animals to really feed in. So this particular area here, I really wanted to share with you guys and also to help maybe a farmer out there in case you really want to also start your farm so that you can have an idea of what you need to really plant in your farm and also learn from value farm. So I'm going to take you guys al along with me so that we can see what is actually happening and different sections. We also have the maize. The maize is especially for the pigs guys because you know we have to really cut the costs, the feeding costs because the maize brand here in this country right now is really very expensive. So if you're a farmer out there and you don't have a maize garden please you better really start planting your maize right away because this will really help you so much you're going to cut costs you're going to save a lot on feeding costs so guys let's go around so that you can see what is really actually happening i show you guys the other sections of the farm or come come along with me So guys, this other section here, we have the sugar grays, we have the sun hem right here, of course the whole section. Then the, on the other side, we also have the maize, so we planted our maize for the, for the pigs as well, you know, that's what we are really done on this other section. So guys, we are still moving around, I want to take you guys to the other side of what we have really planted this season, so that you can have an idea of what we actually have at the farm. So. Let's go so that we can see what is really happening on the other side as well because we also have vegetables. So guys, come, come along with me. Ta-da! 
So guys, this is the alfalfa. For those who have been on the channel for a long time, I guess you guys have already seen this other section of the farm. So this has really been cut and it's regrows. That is the amazing bit of it. The amazing bit of the alfalfa. We feed this to our goats, of course. So this has been really very, very helpful to us. The beauty about it, when you cut it, it grows again and it is really resistant. Even if in hard conditions, even if it's really very, very hot, this alfalfa does not die. So this has been a really lifesaver. This was a sample of the alfalfa that we planted. We have also other sections that we planted it in a larger scale, but this is what it is on this other section here. So if you're a goat farmer out there, please consider planting alfalfa. It is really good for your goats as well. Yeah, this is this section. So let's go to another section so that you can see what's happening. Come, let me take you guys along. So guys, we have the sweet potatoes just on this other section here that was really planted well, before even the rains really started. So when the rains have now come, it is even good for them. Then guys, the matoke that we told you guys, I know people who have watched our live stream, there's a live stream that we talked about the matoke that we tried to, the bananas that we tried to plant and they weren't really coming out. Surprisingly, this banana has really surprised us this time around. They grew when the rains came see so we are going to have here the bananas when you come to value farm you're going to enjoy matoke this is a staple of what of ugandan so you guys are going to definitely enjoy this other matoke that is really growing right here so guys and we have the cassava right here oh my god this cassava looks amazing Ooh. guys <laughs> look at the cassava this is all cassava up to some section so at least the food is covered for other stuff as well we have the bananas we have the cassava we have the sweet potatoes for them to eat so that is going to really save you cost of buying food for the stuff as well so this is what we planted on this other section we are going to meet my co-director as well later but let's first go check out the plants we planted this season then we shall have a talk with you guys come guys on this section here we have the brocaria my goodness i'm really very shocked on how this brocaria grows so fast yeah so we're already even cutting it for the goats it is very nutritious it is one of the grasses that we're really proud of having at the farm because this has really helped the goats it is very good with the protein yeah this is this section here up to that other side we also have other seedlings that fred farming in africa gave us that we already put in the nursery bed we are going to be putting them in the garden as well this was just a sample guys but it is really growing and the goats really love it so so much then this other section here we have the lab lab let me show you guys the lab lab here briefly this one here looks like the beans yeah this one also regrows when you cut it grows so it spreads all over and the goats really love it so much especially the lactating mothers in case you really have goats and the ones that have kids give them this one here they will be it will be able to boost their milk production as well so the lab lab is here that's why we always tell you guys plant grass plant grass you don't have to really leave your goats to go out to graze and only feed on the shrubs you can also put for them supplements like what we have here at value farm so this is it for this section guys let's go to another section so that you can see what's at value farm tala <laughs> we're here at the vegetable garden right here guys but we're going to be putting this to the main garden and this is just the nursery that we planted we have our spinach we have our cabbages as well planted right here 
so this is really amazing i'm going to show you guys the other section that we have already transplanted we transplanted the cabbage part of the cabbages that we have here but later today we are going to go and transplant again so that we can definitely take to the main garden that we are supposed to put them then you can also see this other section right here you can see here we are still going to plant here other seeds other seeds that we are going to be planting for the stuff to eat then look at this amazing garden right here the raised garden <laughs> raised vegetable garden i'm really super excited the farm is is moving to the right direction it's really perfect i'm really very glad so i think that is it for the crops that we planted for the grass that we planted the vegetables that we planted this season yeah we also have beans i didn't show you guys the bean sections because we have beans on the other side of the farm but maybe next time i'll take you guys but we have beans we have maize we have the vegetables here we have sweet potatoes we have cassava we have the bananas yeah then also different other grasses that you've definitely seen in the video so that's what we have planted this season and we really hope to really have a good harvest back that side someone already cutting the um, the alf the lab lab is taking to the goats in the house the ones that are lactating the lactating mothers i'm definitely going to show you guys he's just behind where we are coming from he's cutting and also taking them for the goats guys so let's go so guys that is the lab lab we are taking to the goats so we do this every morning as you can see yeah And the beauty with it is that it really regrows very fast. Yeah. So guys, I'm right here with my co-director, you know, I've been telling you guys that, you know, planting your food is really very necessary for your other farm. Yeah, I'm super excited for him to really join us as well. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, this, my name is Grafton, co-director here at Value Farm. I'm glad, you know, we always try to bring you guys updates here and there, but sometimes yeah. life happens at the farm. <laughs> So, you know, we've actually changed the initial chain link fence behind us for the paddock. This is what was supposed to go on initially, but they had to be painted again to make sure that they remain rust free, you know, naturally protected from the elements. So that's something else that we've done here. Um, but like the most important thing is you see what we've planted yeah. and what we continue to plant. True. And um, it's a very, very big part of you running a farm because it doesn't make sense if you have a farm for you to be wasting money okay. on buying food. There are a few things that you might not have at your farm. You don't grow oil every day, <laughs> so it's okay to spend money on to that. Spend on that. But in terms of like feed for the food for the staff, you should be able to actually have the staff handle that stuff True. Um, to help again mitigate your costs and your exposure to your expenses. So that's a very big part of it. Mm -hmm. Now we again we're in a tricky part of the season. Yeah. September is now here and I have to be honest with you guys where we're located the rain has not yet shown up it's shown up it's in Kampala <laughs> it's showed up <laughs> everywhere else I mean we've gotten morning mist and we've gotten a little <laughs> drizzle drizzle but in terms of a regular rain like it's supposed to be here in Uganda this side of the country here in the um, the Lorero section we have not yet seen it or experienced it yet True. So, but we still have our, we're being optimistic and we've planted, um, you know, a decent amount of acreage, you know, in preparation yeah. for the rains. But we also have our own irrigation system, yeah. which we prefer not to tap into. But if we have to, we, we will. We have no choice. You know, but <laughs> by the same token, my heart goes out to our other fellow farmers out here who does not have option B or C. And we've been actually updating you guys about this kind of information because 
you know, the climate has definitely shifted. Mm -hmm. The patterns of the rains in the dry season have now been fully blended. You understand? So, you know, for those of you that are on the continent, you know, I'm sure some of you are getting too much rain, right? And there are more and more pe of our fellow farmers that are not getting nearly enough rain. Any rain at all. So, you know, this is one of those times that most people don't really think about climate change and the impact on the environment when their salads and their favorite nuts stop showing up That's at true. their favorite supermarket. That's true. But the reality is very real and it's very, very scary. So do your part, conserve as much water as you can, try not to be wasteful. I know. Try to do your best to protect the environment. You know, if you can buy reusable bottles, you should do that. If you can recycle, do what you can with that as well. Mm -hmm. And just be more mindful. That is so about true. how we treat the, both the environment and of course be kind to your farmers when you go to the local <laughs> farmers market <laughs> when you are at a real local farmers gathering mm. give that farmer extra love give that <laughs> farmer that extra level of appreciation because we do the yeoman's work yeah. <laughs> most of the time they're out there early in the morning getting their hands dirty breaking their backs Obviously, yes, that's their profession, but by the same token, it's a profession that the farmer has the potential to benefit, mm -hmm. but you as a consumer have the benefit of eating mm -hmm. without you having to go into the field. To the field to grow these crops. Work, right? <laughs> exactly. So show some love to your farmers out there. That is really so true. I love the point of storage water. In case you have reserve tanks, please reserve the water because, you know, with the climate changes, you never know what is really going to happen. So I was showing them our garden, the vegetable garden mm -hmm. that we have. The nurseries already we are preparing to plant on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. We really want to cut costs also on the staff so that we don't really well, waste a lot of gonna, money. We, we're doing both the additional planting, but we're also preparing <laughs> to actually um, find us some black soldier flies. Yeah, that is another thing. Yeah. To act, again help mitigate on pricing. Pricing, yeah. Because let me tell you something. The other day we went to see a fellow farmer who also is into pig production mm. <laughs> you know things are changing when the farmer is telling the potential buyer mm. if you're here for my pigs mm -hmm. you give me at least ten thousand shillings live weight <laughs> and there's no <laughs> negotiation no negotiation <laughs> so that goes to tell you if you if the actual farmer mm. who typically gets squeezed by the middleman mm -hmm. where that farmer can sure. literally just tell you flat out oh are you here for my pigs mm -hmm. i'm selling at ten thousand per kg as if he was the butcher like, yeah. you know things are changing <laughs> things are not so anymore. you need to be ready <laughs> to spend the necessary amount yeah you know to to be able to secure you know your meat even your produce that is so that's true. also changing as well that is so true like you talked about the black soldier flies yeah. so that is some of the things for that maggots we, for maggots that we are going to be having at the farm we shall because definitely we have chickens coming we have chickens also coming as that is another update tell them about our chickens maybe well, guys listen let me tell you <laughs> something you know mm -hmm. so i'm i'm an american ugandan at heart right mm -hmm. in this country i remember the person behind the camera can tell you this <laughs> When I first came here, we went to my favorite supermarket, Carry Four, mm -hmm. and I actually saw the local eggs were being sold. But the image on that carton that I saw, for some reason, it, it stirred something inside of me. Mm -hmm. Because we literally have, you know, folks from the Netherlands that are here. And we love people. We love people from everywhere. I don't hate, you know, we love everybody. But the fact that this is Uganda, where we have actual foreigners that are here making insane profit from selling our local eggs back to Ugandans mm -hmm. that are not being produced by Ugandans. Ugandans. I was so incensed by that. Ever since that day, is, we're talking like a little over a year ago. I was like, carry for the one out of Oasis Mall. When I saw that local egg carton, and I also noticed that the pricing for the local eggs is it's basically about 75% uh, to 100% higher than the price of these exotic birds that are here that are more prolific layers, right? Yes. So my partner and I decided a long time ago, we were gonna start getting into the local chicken part of the business. Yes. Because let's face it, the local chickens are delicious. <laughs> They're very hearty. Yeah. They rarely get sick. Mm -hmm. 
they're very easy to manage easy to manage versus your local broilers and everything else yes. which i'm not a fan of so yeah i love the meat i love the fact that they're very hearty and they're easy to care for and of course they cost uh they fetch a healthy sum compared to your 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 regular chickens here that is so true because let's face it you could have a broiler that's about 3.5 to 4 kgs mm -hmm. and yet you sell a local chicken that's barely at 2.5 to almost 3 kgs mm -hmm. getting double the price that in many true. instances based on where you are and in fact to give you guys an example 30 eggs which mm -hmm. is a tray of eggs here yeah. as far as the the exotic eggs you're looking at like 12,000 shillings right 12 yeah. to 15 max but the local chicken eggs which is the most delicious eggs outside of duck eggs mm -hmm. that I've ever tasted Right now, retail, they're going for 30,000 shillings wow. for one carton. The same amount, three eggs, and those eggs are smaller. The actual tray of the local eggs is has even doubled, doubled in price, price since the last time we even looked at the market and started doing our market analysis, right? True. So at the end of the day, you guys have to make sure, you know, I just want to support my local, my fellow Ugandans here. Yeah, true. Because it should not be that expensive for something local. So what we're trying to do, we're going to test out the market. We're going to have about 3,000 birds for now mm -hmm. to see how we fare in that venture. And hopefully we do well enough to expand that out to 25 to 30, if not 50,000 of the local birds. Yeah. But for now, we'll definitely let you guys know how that pilot program is coming. It's coming along. Because, you know, that's how we do everything. We test it test. first, make sure that it works. <laughs> And then we no, no. both feet first. So yeah, that is so true. Another update we have. Yes. For you guys, um, Which for, one? <laughs> for those of you, you guys know, I've always been a huge fan of sheep. Oh. We've actually been testing our theory on sheep. Yes. And let me tell you, the results have come back. Mm -hmm. Right. We did the DNA test on sheep. Yes. And it read the <laughs> sheep or it. Uh -huh. <laughs> You guys know the lyrics of that song. I can't go too deep okay, in that, right? Okay, okay. The sheep saw it. And so ultimately, we are going to make a heavy commitment to sheep here at Value Farm. Yeah. We're going to be importing sheep from South Africa. We're going to be importing the Dorper breed. Yeah. And we're also going to be testing out the meat masters that we're going to bring in from South Africa. And at some point, we might actually go all the way out to Senegal to, to bring the, the Ladoon. Hey! In Uganda. <laughs> so for now, we're starting out with the Doppers. Yeah. We're going to be phasing out like the, the indigenous um, sheep here. That we have. We're going to be selling the Doppers. And of course, lamb is one of my favorite meats in this whole world. True. I'm sure some of you that are watching, you might deny it even if you're here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. You may think you don't eat sheep. But, but believe me, when you go to your local <laughs> butcher, <laughs> they mix the goat with the that sheep. meat that's extra sweet. <laughs> Is that goat? <laughs> You've been enjoying land. <laughs> so you might true. as well come buy it with the knowledge of knowing that you're buying goat, land, right? Okay. Instead of just buying goat. But it's beautiful. Let me yes. tell you guys this. The, the, the opportunity to rear land, to rear sheep, mm. is something that's been ingrained in me for a long time. You guys know I live abroad. I've mm. lived in the US. I've lived in Europe. I've lived all over the place, Australia. But I'm telling you, I've always been a fan of sheep always been a fan of good lamb mm -hmm. you know i love goat but nothing beats a good lamb chop lamb is really nice yeah. trust me when i started eating lamb i can't go back to other types of meat <laughs> <laughs> and when i first came to uganda my that friend is... liam i know you're watching yes you know i've actually had a few converts <laughs> yes <laughs> where i've made the lamb mm -hmm. and my friends thought they were eating goat <laughs> I know it was not right for me to let them taste it and then tell, tell what, they them after. what they ate after. But to a man and a woman, mm -hmm. everyone who's actually tried the lamb mm -hmm. has been thoroughly happy. That is true. With the actual taste of the lamb. I don't know what people are really missing out with the lamb in Uganda. Ah, you know, another My Ugandan people, you guys are missing out on lamb. If you've not really eaten lamb before, <laughs> you need to try it. It's and I good. think it's also about the cooking bits, I think. The also. cooking matters, but no, but lamb itself <laughs> is just delicious. Lamb, you know, it's younger. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, tender. True. It's tender. You know, and the meat is sweeter, you know, and it has more flexibility. You can aggressively season lamb. True. 
you know, and it, it just works, you know. Mm. But these are some of the things that we're doing. Yeah. And of course, um, we're, you know, behind us, of course, that goat house is going to be coming. Our carpenter went back home. Which I'll give he you. Had a, a, he, we t he took a week off because he was here for quite a while mm -hmm. without leaving. Yeah. So he should be back next week. And then we'll be showing you guys more updates on the goat house is behind us. Mm -hmm. The new paddocks that we're building. Yeah. Of course, our new planting section here. Yes. And of course, everything else we plan on having here at the farm. Another update is about the picking ducks. I know you guys have really seen the numbers have really changed. Yeah, the ones we've been watching, yeah. they've really increased. So yeah. the picking ducks are right here as well. We are increasing the number, which yeah. is really super exciting for us. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Picking ducks. And I, again, I love duck. You guys know, if you watch these <laughs> videos, you know I'm a duck guy also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love duck eggs. You know, a lot of the my fellow Ugandans here, <laughs> you guys don't understand. Duck eggs are so delicious. They're really so nice. You know, well, I don't care if it's from the local duck or if it's a pecking duck mm. or, you know, duck eggs is just great. You know, let me tell you something. There's a reason why people in Europe use duck eggs more in baking mm. than any other eggs out there. You know, mm -hmm. they're not foolish. Mm -hmm. You're not foolish. Yeah. Next time you get a chance, <laughs> you go to the village, <laughs> take a few local duck eggs with you. Mm. You boil them or you fry them. You fry them. You make your Rolexes with it, and then you leave a comment down below. Oh my God. <laughs> this is something I want to actually share with you guys here. Mm -hmm. It's more or less, again, you know how we are as a team. Mm. We like to float out ideas. Mm -hmm. We like to do our market research. research and so orange. we're thinking when the farm officially opened, mm -hmm. we actually want to launch it at some point. We want to do the first Harvest Vest Festival, Festival. here at Value Farm. Now, would you guys actually come to spend a weekend with us for the pork festival, our goat section of this, mm -hmm. where we want to bring in other vendors that are near us, right? Because listen, we don't grow everything here, mm -hmm. right? Where we actually have a weekend filled with music, mm -hmm. food, food, dancing, enjoyment, and greet. Hey. You know, bring out the kids. You can, uh, guys, actually, we'll have a camping, a glamping section for you guys where you can come, enjoy the natural breeze that I'm currently experiencing right now. <laughs> but the best food with the best service, wine, you know, I make a mean cocktail. I have to make you guys a mask off. Yes, you need if to. If you don't know, you need to ask somebody about the they mask off. They need to off. come here. They need to <laughs> okay. come and test when they so, come. So that space you're seeing behind us, I know right now I look like a bush beyond the, the horizon. Yeah. But we're actually going to set it up mm. so that way you guys can come. We'll have your accommodation ready on the other side here. Yeah, true. But for those of you who want to sleep under the stars, have the best wine, the best food, mm -hmm. let us know if you'd be interested in joining us really, here. Yeah our first harvest mm -hmm. you know here at value farm yeah if this is something you're interested in leave it in the comments comments down know. below so that we can and know. of course we're going to be looking for suggestions for the musicians that you want to see here <laughs> you know and if we you know uganda is loaded with artists yeah we can literally have an art food mm -hmm. we can have a music, music. art and food festival, food festival here yeah to give love to our local artists here both from the musical aspect as well as the ones that are truly gifted with sculpture or painting what have you so that's something we're thinking about doing mm. to actually have you guys come welcome to the enjoy fun enjoy the space because the place is vast mm -hmm. we definitely want to utilize it to the fullest so you guys let us know what you think and of course when you come here i know most people will come here because they want to be inspired they want to learn as well so we shall enjoy and also learn from what we have at value farm and you take you know pick ideas from one another because this is kind of networking as well because when other vendors come in when other farmers also come in you share ideas you learn from one another that's the premise of that actual get together that's why mm. we want to do it first harvest maybe yeah. we'll do it once a year mm -hmm. perhaps you know we'll do a few based on what you guys want yeah we want to actually bring you guys together beginner farmers intermediate, intermediate. farmers those that are far more advanced Experienced. in their craft <laughs> Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we create an environment where you have a whole weekend True. where you can actually pick everybody's brain, talk about your different techniques, you know, so you can learn, enjoy in a, in a, in a low pressure environment. True. Because let's face it, everybody's more relaxed when there's food and music involved. <laughs> and we want you guys to come here and, and experience that. And fresh environment. 
Yeah. Eh? With neutral, the nature. Neutral ground. <laughs> <laughs> neutral ground. That is so true. So guys, those are really the updates. Those, those are some of our ideas that we have here. I know we'd rarely come here to give you guys updates, but there's a lot that is really happening, as you have seen already. There's a lot that we've not even shown you on camera today on this particular video, but we shall still bring for you the updates in other videos as well, because there's a lot that is really happening. This is a big farm, and we want to really share with you guys our journey so that you can be able to learn from us and as we also learn from you guys. We really appreciate you guys if you've really watched up to this moment and thank you so much for the 100k subscribers once again okay. you guys yeah. we are so pleased we are so happy grateful do you have to say anything about the 100k ah, thank you and may you guys continue to find us <laughs> you tolerate the, what we do <laughs> exactly and continue to show up week after week and um, mm. continue to support us because we just want to support you yeah. and help educate fellow farmers out there because let me tell you guys, there's a lot of selfish farmers out here. There's a lot of folks that have the technical know-how. Yes. But they will never take a minute to help out a fellow farmer fellow that's farmer. just getting started. Mm -hmm. You know, so we try to put this information out for free. And many people actually reach out to us to do master classes and make people pay for this information. The reason this is important for us to do as a team is because we recognize how difficult it was yeah. to get poignant information, information as it outside. relates to farming, especially accurate information. Are we experts? No, but we're learning. We're, you learning. Know, we're putting forth uh, you know, expert level effort <laughs> <laughs> on this journey. True. And so please share these videos with, uh, with your friends and family members. Mm. You know, you tell them about Value Farm who's here trying to do good in this world doing the good Lord's work. Exactly. And may you join us on our mission. Amen. <laughs> That's amazing. Please consider following us on our social media platforms. That is Instagram, Value Farm UG, Facebook, Value Farm, TikTok, Value Farm mm. UG as well. We have the behind the scenes. We also share some clips there. We also educate you on those platforms. But we really appreciate you guys so much. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Subscribe, like, and share. Till next time. Bye. Bye.